Alright, so some of you may have seen that I wrote a few Facebook posts about the recent Our Boys to Men drama. To my surprise, the issue actually went really, really viral, with many Singaporeans split into either agreeing with me or agreeing with Stray, who is the original poster. So Stray, who is a Singaporean Indian actor, actually went for an audition for Our Boys to Men 4. While he was there, he actually did his audition in um, a neutral Singlish accent, and afterwards he was told by the casting director to be more Indian and to make it funny. I don't want to misquote him so I'll link his post down in the description below. Basically what happened was after the audition, he went on Facebook to complain about how he was told to portray a caricature of his race and that he was reduced to his accent so that the majority race can find it amusing. I guess I saw the article and I immediately felt like he was being quite ridiculous so I wrote my opinion on Facebook. There will always be stereotypes in movies because by and large people relate to these stereotyped characters. For example, a Hokkien spewing root abing is funny. <laughs> A PRC yelling in loud Chinapyang Chinese is funny. In the Sichuan, huh? When we see a horse, uh, you know. <laughs> Minas and mud raps are funny. Ew, ew, and I together forever. And so are Indians who speak in strong Indian accents. But sometimes people don't want to listen to me, how? Huh? You cannot say something is racist if it's happening to all races, right? Is it tasteless? Yes. Is it hackneyed? Yes. Is it racist? No. To my surprise, there were a great many people who got really really pissed off at me and started calling me racist or said that I was insensitive to the plight of minorities and that I needed to check my Chinese privilege. And because I'm the majority race, they said I would never know how minorities suffer on a daily basis and they are the victims of casual racism from Singaporean Chinese. After digging deeper into the issue, I then realised that there is further evidence with regards to Stray. So I did some detective work and I found numerous instances of Stray himself performing accents. In fact, he prides himself on doing accents and shows off a variety of accents at every possible opportunity with the fervent enthusiasm that Kim Kardashian has when it comes to showing off her butt. And yes, Indian accents are included. My special talent is that I can mimic accents from around the world. So let's begin in India. Okay, over here I can get a wonderful chole bhature in Mumbai. We can go to South India. Here we'll get idli and dosas. I can suddenly <laughs> talk as if I'm from India and then, you know, bring it down south as if I'm from Australia, Sydney, down. Aha! This time, with indisputable proof, nobody will disagree with me anymore because Stray is a hypocrite. His noble pose fighting for minorities' rights, the ring hollow as he himself is a repeated perpetrator of all the shit that he is opposing. But still, people are super angry with me. I'm still being called a racist and I've gotten so much hate for the past few weeks. I thought I'd explain myself a little bit more in this video. So the Our Boys to Men saga is not just about one issue, it's about several issues. So I guess let's just take them one at a time. We live in a multiracial society and we have so many different cultures and so many different religions so obviously we are bound to clash at times. I think that as a country, we are pretty lucky that there are no serious cases of racism like people killing each other because they don't like another race. And so we come to casual racism. This is a more insidious form of racism where the offenders don't even seem to know that they are being racist. An example of this would be if a Chinese person makes a joke about Indians eating curry or Malays playing guitar under the void deck and they don't find that it's funny. If you define casual racism as whether or not somebody is offended, then casual racism definitely exists because people sometimes will say things that they don't think is hurtful but end up being hurtful anyway. So what is the solution? Be more thoughtful and be more sensitive. But there is a problem because everyone has a different line to cross when it comes to being offended. I really have no issues with somebody joking about, I don't know, Chinese people having small eyes. Especially when I can tell that it's not meant to be racist but rather to be funny. It's all about the intention and whether I know you well as a person. Another Chinese person might find that the small eyes comment is very racist. So my question is, who should really decide where the line is? Like, should we all ban stereotype jokes from now on? Do we really want a society where everyone is really straight-laced and formal to each other and nobody makes a joke ever again because jokes are always hurtful? 
In Singapore, we all poke fun at each other regardless of our race. So we do that to build rapport and a closer friendship. Everyone's line is different. I think a statement like all Chinese people eat dogs will maybe offend like 90% of Chinese people while a statement that's like all Chinese people are really good at maths will be offensive to maybe 10% of Chinese people. Somewhere in between will be your personal line. If something actually crosses your line, it may not have crossed my line. And I think I reserve the right to think that you're being sensitive. This by no means show that I'm being ignorant or racist or agree with racism. It just means that I don't find the particular issue an example of racism. So putting aside Stray drawing his own rather melodramatic conclusions on the casting director's intentions, Stray's problem was that the character was actually Singaporean Indian and Singaporean Indians don't talk like native Indians. But that being said, Stray has no idea about the background of that character. I mean, maybe he's a new citizen? In that case, the request doesn't seem to be racist at all. I think many people find all kinds of different accents funny and this is not reserved for only Indians at all. It is rather crass humour but I don't think it's racist. What if the casting director also told a Chinese actor to be more Chinese or a Malay actor to be more Malay? I mean if I were auditioning and I was told something like Hey, can you be more Chinese pie or not? Like less ACS ah, more neighborhood school can? I guess this just means that they want someone who speaks in a less like proper Queen's English and inject a bit more colloquial Chinese phrases. Thanks Michelle Chong for giving me an example. You better don't see us no up ah. You better go to the house. And for be more Malay, I guess I would interpret it as you know wanting the actor to be more Marib, kind of like Ebang, that girl, cantik yo. I may be giving the casting director too much benefit of doubt here, but to me, it seems that the entire Our Boys to Men franchise focus on the average heartland Singaporean, and these Singaporeans they tend to speak with a heavy mother tongue influence. I guess we can all agree that the very highly educated, regardless of their race speak pretty much the same sophisticated English that Stray speaks regularly, but that is not representative of our country on the whole. In fact, when someone speaks with proper chim English on Jack Neal's films, that person is usually mocked to be kind of insufferable, elitist, and it's often unlikable. Alright, so we've come to issue number three. So one of the things that people love to throw at me is that Stray has brought up a very important national concern which is the issue of casual racism and stereotyping roles in Singapore movies. This is an issue that needs to be talked about and taken more seriously. So by attacking him personally, it shows that I don't care about this issue. Hello, this is a very one-dimensional and childish way of looking at things. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine if a guy says, Hey man, we should all respect women women aren't being respected enough by men and I'm bringing up this issue because I saw a man today and he did not open the door for a woman. Later on, it's being revealed that the same guy actually never opens doors for women. If somebody says, oh my god, that guy is like such a hypocrite, does it mean that they think that women shouldn't be respected? Obviously not. And furthermore, if somebody says that not opening a door for a woman has nothing to do with respect, does it mean that they are automatically misogynistic? It doesn't. In Stray's case, I think two things need to be taken into account. First, I don't think that his experience in the audition room is a good example of casual racism. There are too many nuances in that situation that we simply don't know about. How can Stray even know when he doesn't have the full script and the film hasn't even been shot yet? In fact, our boys the man has responded and they actually said that they told Stray to try a more Indian accent because they were actually trying to test his versatility. But of course, we have to take into account that this is what they are saying after the saga blew up, so I don't know how true it is. Because there are so many unknowns, it does not make a strong ironclad case for racism. And secondly, the fact that Stray does exactly the same things that he objects to casts doubt on whether he is actually a believer of the preachy things that he's saying. If he doesn't even believe it himself, then why should we believe him? So after my response to Stray, he actually said he's sorry for his stand-up routine which he did 3 years ago and he regretted it the moment he finished his performance because he thinks that it's racist. I don't believe him. 
Why should he be sorry? His performance was not racist at all. In fact, I thought it was really funny. It's just that it doesn't fit his current narrative. He then said that all the other accents in my video clip was him being made to do accents by directors. However, someone left a comment on my Facebook saying that Stray's Arab performance was actually created by himself. Salam Habibi, I am Usahyang Bin Lavin, the world's number one peacemaker. I'm sorry Stray, you did accents time and time and time again and in most of those instances, you were not a poor minority actor who had no choice but to do what a racist director told you to do. You actually did all of that yourself. It seems to me that deep down, you also know that accents are funny. You wield that knowledge as a weapon for comedy whenever it benefits you to make your audience laugh or to buff up your acting resume. But when you're asked to perform that accent, even when you don't fully know the content text of why it's necessary, suddenly it's considered racism, I call bullshit and I don't believe you're a true advocate of what you're preaching. The larger issue of racism is a separate one from Stray's personal behaviour. But it doesn't mean that people cannot bring up his double standards. Personally, I don't like people who don't practice what they preach. Every single time that I see it happen, I'm gonna bring it up. If you wish to discuss racism, that's fine. But I just don't think that Stray should be hailed as the poster boy for it. Here's my conclusion. Is there racism in Singapore? Yes. Do Singaporean movies have racist stereotypes? Yes. Was what happened to Stray an example of racism? I don't think so because it didn't cross my personal line and I explain why. Overall, yes, there are problematic racial issues in Singapore. I just don't think Stray has the moral high ground to lecture us about it. And Neither is his case a good example of a racism problem in Singapore. As part of the majority race, I'm open to listening and doing better because I do want Singaporeans to all get along. And I think it's great that thanks to Stray, there's now a dialogue about racism in film. These things are a delicate topic and there needs to be discussion and communication in order for us to all understand each other. So I'd love to know what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. However, please keep in mind that just because someone's personal line isn't the same as yours, insulting them and telling them that they are racist isn't going to change their mind and neither is it a convincing argument for sensitivity and kindness when you yourself are displaying none. Alright, so we've come to the end of the video. Thank you for sticking to the end. I just want to say to all my Singaporean viewers, I love you guys regardless of your race. Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!